been for a while, and the director of user experience at Posturus, which is a consumer blogging platform uh, based in San Francisco, and uh, then prior to that was in Washington, D.C., working in a number of agencies. So I've been working on the web and with startups for a long time, but not necessarily in the healthcare space. And uh, so upon um, you know, hearing about Rock Health and upon talking to Hallie and some of those other folks, I was realizing that the, the types of people who make great consumer web apps and mobile apps aren't the types of people who tend to go into healthcare or IT. Mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's a big divergence there. Uh, so, at the same time, there's both a personally fulfilling and financially fulfilling opportunity in healthcare. So it's, you know, it seems kind of like a no-brainer that you know there there was definitely a way that I could contribute and and go at the startup thing, which is something I've wanted to do for a while, as as mentioned in the video. Uh, so, Hallie and the crew asked me to talk about the future of parenting today, which is kind of funny because I'm not a parent. Um, <laughs> But yeah, as, as I'll talk about later, the, the uh, software that I'm working on, that Keith, my business partner Keith, who's sitting out there, still working, um, and myself are working on, is really focused on parents. And you know, before too long, I'm sure I'll be in that same, similar position. And I, was, I was seeing challenges that many of my friends were having and, and kind of wanted to start working on this problem to, uh, to help them solve it as well. Uh, and so in addition to not being a parent, it's, this is about predicting the future, which is, you know, both easy and hard. And, you know, I say easy because every tomorrow looks a heck of a lot like yesterday. Change tends to be incremental, um, except, of course, when it doesn't look a lot like yesterday and the world's changed. Uh, historically, change, societal change may seem relatively linear or unexpected. Um, but in fact, when we look at American culture, you can kind of break these down into 80-year cycles. So, you know, the beginning of the American Revolution, obviously a historic upheaval after which there was a ton of nation building that happened. It was a very uh, initially idealistic time and then a very practical, pragmatic time thereafter. Fast forward 80 years, we have the Civil War, again, a very idealistic time leading up to it and Reconstruction afterward, a very inherently practical time. 80 years later, you guessed it, the Great Depression and World War II, initially very idealistic in the roaring 20s, leading up to an incredibly practical time thereafter. And here we are, right around that same cusp, where we have an idealistic generation in the baby boomers and a much more pragmatic and optimistic generation in the millennials who are just starting to become uh, adults going through college. And so like I said, instead of thinking of this as a linear progression, it ends up being a cycle. The idealist uh, generations tend to have, tend to develop strongly held values. They can be uncompromising at times, even if they are very divided. Um, so the baby boomers are the current idealist generation that's alive today, and uh, the past idealists would have been like the missionary uh, generation, which was William Jennings Bryan and Douglas MacArthur, very sort of hard-nosed uh, idealists in that respect. Following them are the reactive generations, and this is Generation X right now. Reactive generations tend to be raised sort of at a distance. They tend to uh, have a long leash, and so they, they tend to become very individualistic as a result. Uh, they can be really entrepreneurial and risk-taking. And past uh, reactive generations were the lost generation in the late 1800s, which was uh, Irving Berlin, F. Scott Fitzgerald, uh, Mark Twain, uh, in the Gilded Generation before that. Civic generations are sort of the polar opposite of the idealistic generation. Uh, and we'll be talking a lot about it since the millennials are, are inherently a civic generation. They tend to come of age during relatively difficult periods in American history. And as a result, they, rather than uh, sort of becoming down as a result of that, they tend to be very optimistic as a result of that. So they oppose the cynicism and idealism that idealistic generations uh, have preceded them. And, and so when you look back, uh, the GI generation, or the greatest generation, was also a civic generation. Um, you know, Kennedy and Cronkite are sort of from that group. And the Republican generation of the American Revolution with John Paul Jones, Jefferson, those types of guys, were all part of these civic generations as well. 
And then finally, the adaptive generation tends to get smothered as they're growing up by these civic generations that are so intent on raising their children perfectly that uh, they end up being very risk averse as a result. And you, you can kind of see that in society now, very highly protective parents that are saying, you know, you can't do all these things. And as a result, it, it, it actually, the kids in adaptive generations or as they become adults, don't react to, to that. Instead, they sort of embrace that and become fairly risk averse. And historically, you would look at like John McCain and Joe Biden as those types of folks. They came from the silent generation uh, between the GIs and the baby boomers. And they tend to be very compromise oriented. They don't want a lot of loud screaming and fighting. They'll, they'll do what they need to, to to move things forward. <clears throat> so when you apply this perspective to parenting, um, we talked about it a little bit, but the silent generation here, the, the, the currently alive adaptive generation, tends to be overprotected, smothered in a lot of ways. Like I said, they end up being risk averse. Then the follow, they're followed by the idealist generations who are raised fairly indulgently. Um, you know, I want my kid to have everything, etc. Uh, and that allows them the space to, to generate those strongly held ideals. And the baby boomers are that example. Reactive generations, like I said, raised distantly. So, you know, this is the Breakfast Club, the typical, the archetype Generation X film um, about people from all walks of life who just happened to be on a very long leash and reacted against their parents and looked for their own individuality as a result. And then civic generations tend to be raised within societal norms. It's all about team play, cooperation, uh, <clears throat> basically, you know, participation trophies, uh, community service, all those types of things. And a for everything Yeah, yeah, which, <laughs> which is interesting. Like, there's an interesting perspective on that, that you could think that it would end up making them coddled, but most millennials look at those awards and hate them because it shows it's signifying their mediocrity in some regard, and it just reminds them of it constantly. So it tends actually to be something that in the long run, a millennial will say, I wish I never got all those, you know, six-inch participation trophies. <laughs> Even though at the time they're like trophy. Yeah. <laughs> so of course, millennials are the parents of tomorrow. They're the folks who were born between 1982 and 2004, you know, give or take. Uh, when you talk to somebody who was born in 1982, they kind of don't feel like they were in Generation X and don't quite feel like they were born in. My son was born in 1982. Yeah. So <laughs> it's definitely an in-betweener time. Yeah. I'm sort of on the in-betweener end of the uh, spectrum too here. Uh, so I want to talk about a few things that, a few perspectives that millennials would have and will have as, as they become parents and adults. <clears throat> uh, one, one important thing is that every civic generation extends its youth uh, as much as possible before becoming parents. So this happened during the Depression. Uh, basically the average age of first-time parents went from being 19 or 20 to being 23, 24. Now we're pushing into 27, 28, 29. Um, <clears throat> that's not, however, because millennials are not interested in becoming parents. 52%, the largest group studied by Pew, most of these numbers are from Pew Research, so if you need a citation later, I can, I'm happy to give it. 52% of millennials say that their most important life priority is being a good parent. So obviously, it's obviously the majority, the biggest group by far. And the number two ones say that their most important life priority is having a successful marriage. So family values and priorities and concerns are clearly top of mind for millennials, even though they're pushing off those obligations until later. But that would, would that be any different than any other generation as far as yeah, it's, percentage? It's significantly higher than other generations, especially Generation X. Generation X was much more interested in having a high paying job, establishing my own career, and, and those types of things that weren't as family oriented. And, and baby boomers, even, even well, not more so, but are sort of halfway between when you look at the numbers. Parenting will happen <clears throat> in many different forms. It will take many different shapes in, as the millennials become adults. 39% of millennials are not white. It's the most uh, diverse American generation uh, compared with 30% of all adults over the age of 30. Ninety-six percent of white millennials disagree with the notion that they don't have much in common with people of other races. And in fact, when you look at baby boomers, that's only sixty-four percent of people who say who are willing to disagree with that statement. So, um, 
millennials are much more accepting of, of different races, different ethnicities than previous generations. Generation Xers are, are pretty good on that, on that too, but not quite as high as 96%. 33% of millennials think that immigrants threaten American values. It's over 50% for all other generations. 22% think that it's important to marry someone of the same religious faith. It's over 40% for all others, and when you look at the baby boomers in the silent generation before that, it's more like 60%. So, and, and finally, 68% of millennials disagree with the notion that more gay couples raising children is bad for society. Uh, it's about half of older populations that, that would disagree with that statement. So you can see all the different shapes and varieties that millennial parents will be comfortable, or millennial adults will be comfortable with when it comes to raising children. For millennials, parents are going to, uh, parenting will happen in the suburbs, which is a fairly dramatic reversal from the trend that Generation X especially had been uh, moving in where urbanization was becoming very trendy and chic. Millennials, <clears throat> number four on that list of top life priorities uh, is owning their own home, which is significantly higher than Generation X, where it's more like 8% say that it's an important life their, among their top priorities. Uh, and this number seems kind of crazy to me, 68% believe that it's, it, it is an adult responsibility to house our elderly parents. Um, when you go to Generation X, that's like 30%. When you look at baby boomers, it's like 35%. Silent generation, 15%. So very strong uh, family responsibility. They anticipate, when you look deeper into this, they anticipate that they'll help their elderly parents near their elderly par parents. They're not going to make them move across the country. So, you know, it's, it's a very uh, suburban, familial kind of lifestyle that they picture for themselves. Talked a little bit about how diverse the couples might be, but parenting is within the couple is going to happen uh, either from the man, the woman, or both, splitting those responsibilities in, in many different ways. Uh, here's a quote from uh, Jen Kalaitis, Kal uh, who says, Today's women were raised to believe we were equal to men, but we didn't have to try to be them to prove it. We play sports, go to college, spark, start businesses, have babies, and travel the world on our own terms. We aren't constantly play, trying to outman the boys play for play. Uh, millennials have grown up in an environment where you know, women are treated completely equal, equally. They're not told what they can and can't do, so it, it's never a question. Whereas with Generation Xers, Baby Boomers, feminism is a much more important element of that society. So both parents, and that affects men too, men sort of realize that it could kind of go either way when it, when it comes to parenting. There's, there's no real difference between what the man can do as a red earner versus, versus the woman. So uh, it ends up sort of being a toss up, a coin flip in terms of which parents are going to, uh, which parent in the relationship is going to take sort of primary responsibility or if they're going to split it equally or how it's going to work out. In fact, this is kind of a crazy number. Across the entire population, 68% of Republicans, 92% of Democrats, and 71% of Independents support paid paternity leave, uh, which is kind of a pretty unanimous considering all the divisiveness that you would have for most social services or most social concerns in the country. So across the board, at this point, parenting is becoming an equal opportunity job. <clears throat> And, and with that comes challenges for employers as they have to uh, learn how to adapt and potentially deal with those types of lifestyles. Employers who wish to attract top talent will have no other choice but to accommodate the generation's demand for such things as telecommuting, flexible hours, childcare, and round-the-clock access to technology to create a seamless blend between working and raising a family. And this is actually interesting because Work-life balance isn't a term that millennials tend to identify with. They don't actually want work-life balance because that makes them feel like work is the stuff you don't want to do and life is the stuff you do want to do. Instead, they want a job that they want to do and they want to blend that with the rest of their life and intertwine those things sort of seamlessly in a way that isn't necessarily about clocking out at 3 o'clock instead of 5 o'clock so you can get home and do the things that you want. <clears throat> 